Shelby was in a wheelchair. She was not able to walk. She was not able to speak. She could not hold up her head. She had a hard time swallowing and eating. She would choke on her foods. Shelby has a uh, very unique condition. Uh, it, is, uh, it probably fits into a category of neurological disorders called neurotransmitter metabolism disorders. Need some help, Bum Bum? Ten years ago, we went to the neurologist who started her on basic tests, MRIs, muscle biopsies, chromosome tests. All these tests were coming back normal. The doctors would exhaust all their efforts to find an answer for her, and once they did that, it, they couldn't help her anymore. They would put their hands up and be done. Shelby is an example of uh, many other children that we see where there is no diagnosis. I think uh, that is probably the key, is that we suspect some things, but we do not have an exact diagnosis. And that's what made us think that uh, she would be an excellent candidate for genomic sequencing. We met Dr. Narayanan and I knew it was going to be different. He was very interested in her case and I knew he wasn't going to be just like one of the other doctors. He was going to stick with her to the end, good or bad. Shelby was declining in her level of function. Mentally she was as brilliant as she is now, but um, I was watching her becoming weaker and weaker over the months and years. We were desperate to find a way to treat her, and luckily we had this clue. We sequence a genome, it's three billion letters long, and we come down to four million changes. So of those four million changes, there are about four or 500, we'll call them novel changes, and we believe in those small number are the clues that could tell us about the most severe events that are affecting a family. In the case of Shelby, one of the ones that stuck out was involved in, in dopamine. After we started the treatment, I would say within um, maybe three or four months, I was happy to hear that uh, her mom and dad got rid of the wheelchair lift in their van. She was uh, walking to school, able to walk all day long, and I was not worried about her eating anymore. I was not worried about her breathing anymore. Shelby, to us, demonstrated this can be done. This can be utilized to better understand rare diseases in children and that we should be doing it. I was able to go to restaurants, to a store, walk in, and it was just, it was amazing. We're not trying to stop there at the genetic diagnosis. We're trying to provide even more information back to the physician, back to the families about how we might now attack this disease. The genetic answer is not the stopping point, it, but it's the next stage of the journey. It gets us to a new foothold. It's a new answer for these families where, in a lot of cases, they've had none. I have some advice to give to other disabled children. Um, I know how you're feeling. Never give, never give up. Because, you know, even though, you know, there are some hard time, times, the embarrassment, embarrassment, and made fun of, and and. And, and, you know, not doing stuff other people didn't do. You know, I know how we feel. And it, it's hard sometimes. I did that. But you just, you just never give up. Don't let anything put you down. Because you, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Go. Go on, man. God made you for a, a reason, and God never missed, missed.